Hi, what is up guys? Lynn Ray here and today is day number four of my Learning to Code series. My goal is to code every single day until I get it right. And then when I get it right, I'll keep on doing it. Let's go ahead and get on with this. So today we're talking about CSS visual rules. All right, so I'm using Code. I'm using Code Academy at the moment. Uh, Code Academy is free. They also have a paid version. I'm using a free version. If you guys are interested in that, I'll leave a link in the description. It's just CodeAcademy.com. I've also been using Free Code Camp. Both of them are good. I I like them both, but right now I'm, I'm really feeling this Code Academy, just because it's very basic and it and, and kind of goes in you know sequential order. So. The first step was HTML, now it's CSS. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start my timer here, 25 minutes. All right, let's see. So right now we're doing intro to visual rules. OK, in this lesson, you will learn a basic structure and syntax of CSS so that you can stay, excuse me, start styling web pages elements. And that's what I'm interested in. I want to get this show on the road, start designing and developing uh, web pages. So I'm going to go ahead and press next. Or run. Oops, sorry, did that. Let's press next there. All right, CSS structure. To style an HTML element, use CSS. Using CSS, you need to write a CSS declaration inside the body of a CSS selector. Okay, the example above selects the H1 element inside the selector's body. We type blue, excuse me, color, colon, blue. This line is referred to as a CSS declaration. CSS declarations consist of a property and a value. Property Let's see, the property you'd like to style in an element, i.e. size and color. Value is the value of the property. 18 pixels for size, blue for color. Okay, so according to this, obviously we know that this is a tag just from HTML. Uh, this affects the element, that, that particular element that's in the HTML file. Uh, it's saying this is color blue is considered a CSS declaration. The entire thing uh, what is the entire thing called? Okay, we haven't gotten to that yet. All right, so this is a this is the property. This is the value. All right, makes sense. In the example above, the property is color and the value is blue. The property and value are separated by a colon. A semicolon should always be used at the end of a declaration. All right, that's important. I know that because when I was um, uh, changing the font size the other day to one of my to my web page. I missed the colon, excuse me, the semicolon, and it didn't work. All right, where are we at here? So finally, the entire snippet of code in the example above is known as a CSS rule or a rule set. CSS rules consist of a selector, which is the H1, and all declarations inside of the selector. Okay, so, so in an HTML document, excuse me, in, in an HTML document, obviously these are considered tags. Uh, in a CSS document, it's called a selector. So, okay, that makes sense. So let me go over these one more time. I'm gonna try and see if I remember these. So the entire thing is called a CSS rule. This is called a CSS declaration. The color would be considered the value, excuse me, the property, and blue would be considered the value. And this is called a selector. All right, Let's see if I can now it's saying look at the style that CSS and explore different CSS rule sets. All right, so paragraph, font size 18. So this is all standard stuff here. So this is these are all the CSS declarations that will affect this selector or the P in the index file. All right, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next Font family. All right, this is what I worked on yesterday. So I just put a video up by uh, yeah, this morning, I think it was, um, and uh, it was my last video that I put up, and I actually talked about changing the font size. Excuse me, the font of your web page. So here it is. It's kind of perfect. If you've ever used a formatted word processor, chances are that you probably also use the feature that allowed you to change the font you were typing in. Font refers to the technical term typeface or font family. 
to change the typeface of text on your web page, you can use font family property. Okay, so if, you, if you've seen my last video, I kind of went over this very briefly, but this is the exact same thing. In the example above, the font family for all the main heading elements has been set to Garamond. When setting typeface on a web page, keep the following points in mind. The font specific to a style sheet must be installed on a user's computer in order for that font to display when a user visits the web page. Number two, the font typeface for all HTML elements is Times New Roman. Ah, I didn't know that. I actually thought it was Arial, but it's Times New Roman. You may be familiar with this typeface if you've ever used a formatted word processor. If no font family attribute is defined, the page will appear in Times New Roman. All right, so that's the default. It is a good practice to limit the number of typefaces used on a web page to two or three. This helps the page load faster in some cases and is usually a good design decision. I got an itchy back here. Um, I have dry skin. When the name of the typeface consists of more than one word, it's best practice to enclose a typeface name in quotes like so. All right, so that makes sense. So you're basically putting it in, in quotes, I'm assuming, so that the file isn't looking for two different types of font. It knows that this is one font that it needs. Okay, you can find a reference of web fonts here. Okay, I'm going to click on that. I've actually been to this page before, and this is pretty cool. It's just a, a bunch of fonts, and I'm assuming if you click on it, it gives you, yep, so it gives you all the, the information for CSS. So it's pretty cool. Well, yeah, that's pretty cool. So it kind of takes all the guesswork out. It's uh, the quick way. I won't be using this way only because I'm, you know, I'm learning. I, I, I want to basically manually put everything in. I don't want to do any copy and pasting like that. It's just too much information. You know, I, I need to do it manually so that I remember. All right. So I've actually been on this page before. Uh, my computer shut down for some reason. Excuse me, my, um, my browser started screwing up. So, but we'll go over it again anyways. All right, so, all right. inside the styles.css, add the font family of the main heading h1 and subheading h2 to Georgia. So actually, I'm gonna go ahead and reset this so that I can do it for you all. So basically it wants me to change the font style or the font family to Georgia for H1, which is H1 here and H2 right there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and press enter. So it's just basically font, family, and then, excuse me, colon. And then we wanna put Georgia. So one of the things you also wanna know is, is things are case sensitive. Everything is case sensitive. So if the font family has a capital G, you want to use a capital G. And we're going to do the same here for H2. So it's just font family and colon Georgia. And there we go. So that should all be correct. We're going to go ahead and run it. It's perfect. And then next it's asking me to change the font family of the paragraph to Helvetica. So paragraph is this is the P right there. So that is the P selector is what they call it. This will be the color is the property. Alice blue is the value. So it wants me to put uh, Helvetica. So we're going to do the same thing. So they want the property to be um, font family and then the value is Helvetica. Hel Helvetica, there we go. I don't think I've, I've only had to spell that word once, one other time in my whole life. And so that's that. So that's good to go. We'll move on to the next page. So now we have font size. And as you can see, I've done this page as well, uh, but my computer crapped out on me a few, a, bit, a few minutes ago. I'm having me an ice cold beverage here. Icy cold. It's delicious. All right. The change in the typeface isn't the only way to customize text. Oftentimes, different sections of a web page are highlighted by modifying 
the font size. All right, so there's font size and font weight. We'll probably do weight later, I'm not sure, but weight just refers to the thickness. The font size is the actual length and width of the actual letter. But right now we're working on the size. All right, to change the size of your text on a web page, you can use font size properly. All right, in the example above, font size of all paragraphs was set to 18 pixels. PX means pixels. And is a way to measure font size. It is a way. I think you can also use percentages as well. I think I've seen that on, on one page before. All right, in style.css, set the font size of paragraph elements to 18 pixels. So we're going to go to the paragraphs. We want to set the, the property to font size. And then we want the value to be 18 pixels. So just 18 pixels. And I always remember to put that semicolon in the back. Oop, that's 10 pixels. We want to go ahead and run it. If we're good to go. We're good to go. All right. So pretty self-explanatory here, man. It's if basically, you know, it's changing everything in these P paragraphs here. Everything there is being changed to font size 18, the color is Alice Blue, line height 1.3 EM. I'm not quite sure what EM stands for, but I'm sure I'll learn eventually. So that's pretty much it. Let's move on to the next one. Five. All right, so this is actually where I stopped at before my computer crapped out. All right, so here we have font weight, and I think I mentioned this earlier. In CSS, the font weight property controls how bold or thin the text appears. All right, Ooh, look at that. In the example above, all paragraphs on a web page would appear bolded. The font weight property has another value, normal. Why does it exist? If we wanted all text on the web page to appear bold, we would select all text elements and change their font weight to bold. If certain sections of the text was required to appear normal, however, we would set the font weight of that particular element to normal, essentially shutting off bold for that element. Okay. In CSS style, you can also use numbers as well. In CSS style, uh, dot style, excuse me, style dot CSS, set the font weight of the paragraph elements to bold. All right. So we'll go, there's no font weight already there, so we'll just add so font. Weight is the property, and then we're going to go bold, and that's the value. So that's that. We'll go ahead and run it. Pretty simple there. And so as you can see, I don't know if you noticed that, but everything over here turned bold. All right, we'll move on to the next one. Text align. Ah, I talked about this in my, in my other video as well. All right. No matter how much styling is applied to text, typeface, size, weight, etc., text always appears on the left side of the browser. Correct. To align text, we can use text align property. The text align property will align text to the element that holds it, otherwise known as its parent. All right, I'm going to read that again. To align text, we use the text align property. The text align property will align text to the element that holds it, otherwise known as its parent. Okay, got it. Makes sense. The text align property can be set to one of the following three values, left, center, and right. All right, left aligns the text to the left-hand side of the parent element, which in this case is a browser. Center aligns inside the parent element, uh, aligns text to the right-hand side of the parent element. Okay, all right, so pretty, pretty self-explanatory there. Inside that CSS, set the text align property of the main heading so that it appears in the center. So the main heading is H1, obviously. So let's go ahead and put text align. Text align, and then center, colon. That's it. And so if you watch over here, this how. The rise of soccer, etc., will slide over to the center of that page. Let's go ahead and press center. Oh, I see that. Pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead to the next one, number seven. Sim. 
Before discussing the specifics of colors, it is important to make two distinctions about color. Color can affect the following design aspects, foreground color, background color. All right, all right, all right. Foreground color is the color that the element appears in. For example, let's see, foreground color is the color that an element appears in. For example, when a heading is styled to appear green, the foreground color of the heading has been styled. Interesting. Conversely, when the heading is styled so that the background appears green, the background color of the heading has been styled. In CSS, these two design aspects can be styled with the following two properties, color and background color. This property styles an element foreground color. Oh, okay. I'm assuming, okay. I think I was a little confused there. So basically, it looks like color would be like the color of the text. Background color would be the background behind the text. All right, makes sense. All righty, so that makes sense. All right, so an example above, the text of the heading will appear in red and the background of the heading will appear blue. Okay, <laughs> I uh, man, I was going next there. I was a little confused. Installed out CSS set the background color and the captain selector to white. Huh? Where's captain selector? Oh, I can't read. Caption selector. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to go ahead and select that to white. So we want the background color, so it's just background uh, color. And white. And there are also other ways to uh, change colors. You can use like these number indications. I don't know exactly what they're called, but uh, but you don't have to know the exact name of a color. There are different types. All right, we're gonna go ahead and press run. And that should be correct. Good. Uh, then in the same class selector, set the color of the text to black. Okay, so which I want to see what's caption exactly which area. So caption basically is the bottom portion, the local semi protein. Okay, it's the bottom of the screen. Interesting. I'm not quite sure. All right, we'll see. All right, so we're going to go ahead and turn the. That's interesting because it's. Why am I turning the background? And it looks like paragraph, the local semi protein. Okay, I don't know what that means, but. I don't see the, these particular words on the screen or on here. So we'll just go with it. Um, but I don't see the what's actually going to change. All right, I'll go ahead and press enter. Should be good. Oh, did I use the wrong one? I sure did. All right, sorry about that. Not paying attention. And we're going to do right there, so we do the color, which will change the text color to black. And go ahead and run it. That should be correct, which is interesting because I don't see. Ah, there it is right there. So that wasn't visible earlier. That's why I couldn't see it. So that's pretty interesting. So that's pretty new. I never, I, I've never known how to do that. So class image. So he put text on top of an image. Pretty cool. I'll have to figure that class image. All right, I like that. So there's lots of stuff, man. This is cool.
lots of things that I am learning here and it's freaking amazing. All right, I'm gonna move on to the next. All right, opacity. So basically this is talking about how transparent it is. Opacity is a measure of how transparent an element is. <laughs> it's measured from zero to one. That's a really big range, zero to one. Uh, with one representing 100% or fully visible opaque and zero representing 0% or fully invisible. Opacity can be used to make elements fade into others for a nice overlay effect. To adjust the opacity of element, the syntax looks like this. Overlay opacity 0 0.05. Okay. In the example above, the overlay element would be 50% visible, letting whatever is positioned behind it show through. Make the caption class transparent by adding the opacity attribute with a value of 0.75. Also, oh, that's cool. So what's going to happen here is it's basically going to make this, I'm assuming it's going to make this white background a little, I guess, transparent so that you can actually see the field behind it. But jumping a gun, I'll see. So let's go dot overlay. Oh no, oh, that's not right. What am I doing? So it's just uh, opacity. So opacity, and then we're going to use uh, dot seven five with that semicolon and. Let's put a 0, 075. Let's do it correctly. And let's see what happens here. I scroll down. Yep, so there it is. So it's no longer completely white, it's transparent. All right, so that's pretty cool. And we're going to move on to the next one. So it's basically opacity. All right, I have to remember that. All right, background image. All right, so this is the last page uh, for this segment. CSS has the ability to change the background of an element. One option is to make the background of an element an image. This is done through CSS property, background image. Its syntax looks like this. So it's just background image, colon, and space, and then the URL. Okay. So you have to put URL parentheses. The background image property will set the element's background to display an image. The value provided to background image is a URL. The URL should be a URL to an image. I wonder if you could use, um, I, don't, I don't think it has to be a URL, but apparently it says here it does. The URL should be a URL to an image. The URL can be a file within your project. It can be a link to an external website. To link to an image inside the existing project, you must provide a relative file path. Okay, got it. If there was an image folder in the project with an image named mountains.jpg, the relative file would look like this, image slash mountains.jpg. Okay, got it, so we're good. In style CSS, change the background image of the dot image class, use the following URL. So let's let me just copy that because that's not. So we're going to find our dot image selector class. And, and that dot image is actually referring to this image here. So, that's interesting. So I'm wondering if it's going to make this image the background for all of that. It's, or maybe not. I don't know. Change the background image of the image. Use the following URL. Okay. Let's change that to that. Paste. All right. We're going to go ahead and run it. Nope, I didn't do that. Well, it worked. Uh, so basically, we just changed the image. We changed it to a weaker image, too. So that wasn't 
Okay, so it's all pretty self-explanatory. So we went over, I'm gonna look at the little background thing here before my timer runs out. So opacity basically um, is how transparent the picture is. It ranges from zero to one, one being completely, uh, completely there and zero being visible. Color changes the color of the text text align, obviously the alignment of the text or image within its container or its element, font weight, the thickness, font size is the actual size of the font, font family is the type of font, and uh, that's pretty much it. So it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. This is pretty, okay. All right, so, so I've done this before, so I'm a little familiar with some of this stuff. And so it's not really, really new, but it's good to have refreshers because some of these I didn't know. So I didn't really know um, background uh, image. I didn't know that one. I didn't know opacity either. All right, incredible work. You use CSS to alter text and images throughout the website, throughout this lesson. You've learned concepts, including, yes, font family. And there's my little timer for 25 minutes. All right, font weight defines how thick or thick, thick or thin. I right, just said all these things. That's so funny. I did the recap before the recap. Text align, uh, properly placed text in the right, left, center of its parent container. Color and background color. Color defines the color of the text, while background color defines the color of the color behind the text. CSS can make an element transparent with the opacity property. CSS can also set the background of an element to an image to background property. Got it. All right, so that's pretty cool. All right, so anyways, that's it for this video. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it here. I'm gonna take a five minute break and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna do uh, some more, uh, another maybe 25 minutes or so, and then uh, two more times and anyways, talking, rambling. That's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, comment, share if this video was beneficial for you or anyone else. Share it, like it, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.